So the next step is to go to Car Quest to get that paint mixed. Um, sand the car down. We're going to have to tape the whole back end off of it. And, uh, because see, when they repainted the car, they didn't do the engine bay, which I understand why it's a lot of work, but, I mean, come on. You can't have a nice, shiny engine sitting inside of this. Just can't be done. So, we will, uh, paint the car up to here. Then if I ever so desire to repaint the rest of the car someday, all I gotta do is just the easy stuff. The hard stuff will already be done. Previous owner wanted to have the car repainted because it looked pretty nasty. So we spent all the time sanding it down, getting it ready for uh, paint, except he didn't remove the fenders, which why is beyond me, because this is a paint job that he got. The inside of the fender right here is what sits inside the engine bay. It is clearly 25 year old paint. I mean, the primers rubbed through on some sections, missing paint in others, but they only did the outside, which why you'd go through all that effort and just have to, it's beyond me. If I found this out after I painted, I'd have been fuming. I decided this little lip here would be a perfect spot to uh, paint the engine bay and then leave the outside of fender for next time when I paint the entire car. Well, as I peeled this tape back to redo some of it, I found on the other fender that the paint was coming off with the tape. So you can see the discoloration right here and all the paint that's on this tape right now. Luckily the outside of the car is not doing it. So it seems like they painted the outside of the car, scuffed it, whatever, but they did not do the inside engine bay at all. That's where the overspray was into the engine compartment and that's the paint that's coming off with the tape. So thank goodness we found that out now and not later. It's Sunday night, the week of New Year's for 2019. We got quite the production going on in here. I stripped the entire engine bay out, and when I started uh, sanding the engine bay, my original idea was to just kind of go over it, you know, just scuff and paint it with 600. I didn't realize how bad the paint is in the engine bays of these old Mazdas. So the moment I put 80 grit to it, it seems like the paint was just falling off of it. And uh, I started over here, and you just can't stop. So I ended up going around through the entire car with 80 grit. And yes, it would have been easier to sandblast it, but a couple problems with sandblasting. So one is that the car actually has seam sealer from the factory all around like the, the shock towers and these little creases. So I didn't want to ruin that. And then there's also the problem of the windshield being in the way for sandblasting. Plus the rest of the car is pretty decent. So couldn't do sandblasting. I guess I could have done aircraft stripper, but I've never messed with that before as another possibility. But I spent weeks sanding and sanding and sanding all by hand basically. I mean you can get the DA sander in the big areas like you can get it up here and up here but you're not going to get in these little cracks and crevices. I mean the amount of detail I took sanding is just crazy. Everyone that's walking here is like what in the world are you doing? But I'm just very particular so. Now the fenders are only going to run up maybe to about here so all this spec is not seen. However. I just like knowing that underneath it's good, it's not going to have any rust or anything, which I found zero rust issues on the car. I mean, I even went underneath here and sanded all this, sanded all that, sanded under the frame. I also did under the hood, um, because the hood was unpainted when the previous owner did the outside of the car, so I went through every little crack and crevice just hand sanding. Now this one was pretty easy, the paint was pretty good on it. so. And the, this is an aluminum hood, so it's not like you can take a DA with 80 grit on it. It just scarred all up, so went through with 600, really got it nice and smooth. Can't feel anything with my hands. Any uh, changes in height, so that's pretty good. Then also over here, the fenders, the inner fenders were not painted from the previous owner, so I went through and sanded the inside of that, so when you pop the engine bay, these are also uh, the same color as the rest of the car. We also have the hood hinges hanging up right here. That's sanded really nice, 80 and then 600. Now because I couldn't get the chassis harness out of the car easily, I kind of used some pictures online as some reference. I saw a guy hung his harness from the top of the car 
and then he was able to paint around it. Well, I couldn't exactly get it to hang up pretty well, so I got it sitting on this box in the center. I didn't want to land across these areas here, so I held it up with two of those up to the top of the wedding tent. And then to keep it from sucking inwards, I've got two five gallon buckets, one on each side, with a lot of weight inside of them to kind of pull the harness out and up at the same time. And obviously it's adjustable with our zip ties here, so we can just change a little at a time. I go through all the effort of sanding the car this well. I guess my inspiration would be those guys that are on like 1320 video where they're out on the street and uh, they pop up someone's hood and the thing is just a million bucks on the inside and everything looks perfect, shiny, beautiful, high horsepower, so I guess that's what we're going for is a street cred here. She's finally primed. Look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous. We had no runs, no dirt pop up unexpectedly, which is uh, a common thing with all these holes, like, like spraying through here, dirt shot out of there. Didn't have anything like that. Overall, it looks like a brand new car in here. Just absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to get the base coat clear coat on this thing because it's going to look great. The factory seam sealer, even though it's not the cleanest looking, blended in really, really well, so that's good. I don't know if this camera caught it, but when I was painting the engine bay, uh, the problem is there's so many cracks and crevices that while you're painting, half the paint's just shooting up in the air, just creating overspray, and it just lingers up in the air here because we only have two little box fans. Um, because of that, when I was painting the hood, I think uh, some of the overspray just started landing in the paint a little bit. This thing turned about 90% smoother. A couple areas I see some overspray laying on and gave it a little bit of a texture. So what I'm going to do, I'll paint the car base clear one day, cover it up, and then I'm going to do the hood, hood latches, fenders on a separate day. That way the overspray from this doesn't affect this in any way. I don't want to risk all the preparation, the paint cost. I'm having to redo it, it's just not worth it. So we're gonna take an extra day and just make sure we get it right. With the car all primed up, ready to go, I went to uh, Car Quest today and got everything mixed up, ready to go here. Now, the car is originally vintage red, and uh, you can figure out the paint code of your car and the door over there. It tells you vintage red is code NU, as in Nancy Umbrella. So CarQuest was able to mix these up for me. Now, the original Vintage Red for the RX-7 was actually a three-stage system. Obviously you got your primer, which I used Omni MP170. But then you've got your normal base coat, you've got a tinted clear coat, and then you've got a clear coat. So according to the paint guy, they uh, did that because the tinted clear coat just gives us a little bit deeper look when you go to put on the clear coat. Now. As time progressed, now they only made the RX-7 from 93 to 95 in the US, but they made them all the way up till 2002 in Japan. Eventually they got rid of this three coat system, and then they just went to a base clear. I'm not sure what year they did that, but you can get both style uh, paints in the system. CarQuest will mix both of them for you, or Napa, you can go there and they will mix the base clear, but they don't have the three stage in their system. I'm using a fast reducer because it's about 65 degrees in here, so fast reducer is what we're going to use on this. So we're going to do two to three coats of each of these, and then this, we're going to see how this goes, probably three to four is going to be my guess. So, And we got the fast hardener for that as well because, again, temperature's in here a little bit chilly. Stage one is complete. Look at that red. This is our base coat of the NU color for the RX-7. 
So I went through and laid about two and a half or so coats of this. Laid it down really well. This paint calls for a 45 to 55 PSI at the gun, so it's coming out a lot faster than, uh, you know, when you're normally doing primer about 35 or so, so you're really moving around the car pretty quick. But overall, it turned out really, really nice. Just laid on stage two of the paint, that's that tinted base slash clear coat. And what I've noticed is that it's given a lot more depth and color. Um, it's not super shiny yet, it's still a little dull, which is to be expected until we get the true clear coat on. I'm anxious to get onto the clear. It looks so good. Look at this. Look at it. Just gorgeous. Base coat, mid coat, clear coat. Absolutely stunning. I put three pretty heavy coats of clear in this thing. Thought about doing an additional coat, but I saw a spot on the bottom of the frame rail just starting to drip down, so I thought, you know what? It looks perfect as it is. We're not going to try to go and do another one because I didn't think it gained me anything. So, overall, I mean, this thing looks fantastic. First time doing base clear, I'm just astonished with the results. I mean, I have no complaints. This thing looks fantastic just as I thought it would. You know, when you're sitting there standing for hours and hours wondering what it's going to look like, this is exactly what I thought it'd look like. So, I walk out here and I was like, BAM! This thing is twice as shiny as it was last night. Now, don't get me wrong, it looked great last night, but it's like all oh, the clears finally settle in and uh, sealed up really nice, and the thing just looks absolutely beautiful. I mean, so smooth. So much nicer than when it was bare metal. I was sitting here hand sanding every little crack and corner, and I don't think it can possibly show up on the camera. I mean, I sanded between every little corner through here, all these little cracks, crevices all inside of these, I mean, everywhere, and the thing is just glossy smooth. Even the outside where you're never gonna see it, it's just beautiful. That was a moment I've been dying to do, and that is undoing all this tape. So first, we're gonna pull back this. Pop the engine cover. I really am curious to see how well does this thing match? Look at that color match. Obviously the part I did is just going to be a little bit shinier than the uh, outside of the car which the previous owner did. I don't know if they did a single stage. It kind of seems like it. But I was really worried when I painted the engine bay that I'd pop the hood and it looked totally different from the rest of the car and then I had to repaint that right away but it actually looks really nice and matched really well so I don't think I'm going to be as crazy about getting the outside repainted just yet, so I'll feel a little bit better waiting until next winter. Oh, this is just wonderful. Now you're probably wondering there's two layers of tape. I do one layer of tape that uh, covers the very edge I want to seal, and then I do a second layer on the paper just for extra protection. 